Cape Town Academic Associate Professor Ritabile Posa has authored what is believed to be the first full scientific book series written entirely in Sesotho. Posa's work uh, on the book, which took root during the COVID-19 lockdown, marks a significant moment in African scholarship and language justice. Well, she joins us now uh, for more on that conversation. Prof, good to have you and thank you very much uh, for joining us this afternoon. A book that is covering a series around the sciences. What, what exactly does that entail and what what part of our sciences are you dealing with here uh, thank you very much and thank you for having me um i i think first of all we have been uh, talking about decolonizing the curriculum and also decolonizing the mind the space the educational space but there's never really been something tangible uh, when it comes to our indigenous languages so this book responds to um that decolonization that we've been talking about by intellectualizing our indigenous languages for them to be languages of teaching and learning and by so doing this book brings in uh, you know, the information or content that would be used to respond to uh, that decolonization of cu curriculum. Yeah, let's unpack that a little bit because, for example, that, that conversation, um, um, amongst other instances that I've had, is, is, is when they, they speak, for example, about... Uh, um, uh, discontinuation of use of Afrikaans, for example, in certain uh, uh, instances. And, and then the argument would be, well, um, if, if, if you have uh, an issue, why not write books uh, of science in Sesotho or mathematics in, 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 in Sesotho? And, and it's, it's always that debate, well, we don't have that. It takes a long time. It would need a lot of investment and so on and so forth. Does this answer that question? Yes, of course it does. And, and that's another thing. Uh, our languages have not been developed because they have been, uh, you know, sidelined or, or, or uh, yes, as I, as I said, Africans and English have always been the languages that are used uh, you know, for teaching and learning. And because of that, it, there was this stereotype that um, our languages are not enough for, um, you know, scientific way, which was not true. Uh, it is because we, you know, as uh, the speakers of the languages were not doing anything or enough to make sure that we develop our languages by writing this, you know, scientific um, books, by doing research. And this book now responds to those debates that now, uh, where is material? Because if you are now saying you want your languages to be used at, you know, institutions for teaching and learning, we do not have such material. So this book has uh, developed the Sesotho language in terms of research, in terms of responding to the challenges that are currently happening. And again, uh, it's not just for educational, uh, you know, spaces. It's also for, for the community because the community that has information uh, or given information with their languages, they understand better. So it's also opening doors, not just for, you know, academics or, you know, scholars, and, but also for the community. So this is changing the whole, uh, you know, uh, stereotypes that, uh, you know, there's no material because material can be written, material can be produced uh, because why? This time the language policy mandates, you know, institutions to say, uh, produce research, develop these languages. These languages must be used for teaching and for learning and accessibility in institutions and elsewhere. T take us through the process. I mean, you, you, you stepped up to the challenge. You said, I'm not just going to debate this thing. I'm actually going to do something about it. What, what did it take? I mean, what were the obstacles? What were some of the hurdles that you had to go through and the work that you had to put in to get to this point? I think first of all was even uh, trying to sell my idea um, to say I want to produce research in Sesotho. And my, I was coming from the background that we have our own theories, we have our own philosophies, but we have always been relying on English. And but then if we rely on English, but we start saying no, our our languages are. Uh, marginalized and not producing anything. Why can't we come back and become our own uh, Marxists and become our own Chomskys and write you know, the theories that are applicable to our languages? And because I wouldn't do this uh, alone on my own. 
I wrote, um, you know, I, I, I drafted, you know, a call for, for chapters, you know, strictly sort of chapters and, um, you know, send it through to colleagues, you know, uh, in, in, in Soto, uh, Eswatini, and, and I just distributed the call. And then um, I know it was not easy even for my colleagues to understand what are you trying to say. And then I happened to, fortunately, there was a call from NHSS and I wrote with my colleague um, a proposal to ask for funding. The funding so that we could have uh, uh, workshops where we could talk about way forward, how do we write this scientific um, uh, work? How do we, like, let's agree also with terminology because terminology uh, was a bit of a challenge because as I said, our languages have not been developed, especially for scientific um, uh, use. So I had those um, workshops where we agreed in terms of the template we will use, the terminology that we will use. And it, as, I, as you said, it started in 2019. It's been a process because the only publication was done this year, the first publication. But the response from my colleagues was, was, was very positive, though there were you know, um, challenges here and there. I think my position also as the chairperson of the Sotho National Language Body helped because uh, some of this terminology that we developed was, you know, authenticated, you know, through PENSAL. So yeah. it was easy also to like suggest to say, yes, yes, terminology that has been standardized that we can use so that we have uniformity across. Yeah. Talk of that complexity of uniformity. I mean, even in the Sesotho language itself, there, there's complexity of these expressions regionally and maybe even uh, 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 across border in terms of how the language is used. How, how did you navigate that space? Well, that was a big hurdle because they, there's two orthographies in a, as far as Sotho is concerned. You know, there's uh, the Lesotho and Zimbabwe orthography. Those Zimbabwe mixes the both a South African and Lesotho and the South Africa one. And it's been politics. The other reason why Lesotho could not develop because of politics of who actually, which orthography to use. So Lesotho has never developed its orthography. Uh, it's still the one that was used during missionaries. But South Africa is following the IP system, that like the one that is easy to understand and easy to follow. So when I put this um, uh, scholars together, that was the big question. That was the first question to say, what are we going to do with the issues of orthography? I said, right now, I'm not, I'm not, let's forget about borders. Let's forget about, a, a, you know, orthography. All I want is Sesotho research. Can we agree? Because we all scholars uh, of Sesotho, let's talk about how we move forward from here and not put orthography as, 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 a, as a burden. So I decided that, which is, that makes this book also unique to say, uh, for now, because we are starting, uh, I'm going to allow two orthographies, the Lesotho one and South Africa one. And then that will also open that can of worms that's been uh, you know, closed for years to say, how do we harmonize this orthography? How do we move forward? Because uh, whether we like it or not, we this is one language. We speak the same language. We are all, we, we are Basotho, and then we can deny that orthography because when we speak, we speak the same way. But now the challenge comes when we're writing. And that's one other thing that I said. Okay, let's have these two orthographies. Then from there, uh, we move. So the first chapter uh, addresses the issues of, you know, the, the of orthography, why we have two different orthographies and the challenges that, you know, where the, the origin of Sesotho language, and you realize that initially, even this Sesotho, uh, it used to have, you know, Swana, uh, you know, uh, uh, letters, but eventually uh, the missionaries also changed it and removed the, the H and, and replaced with the Ha. So, meaning they were not also, cons there was no consistency from the beginning, but. That's why I said we can't be stuck on the orthography because orthography is something that can be changed, but the language needs to develop. So that's why that was the agreement and we move forward with that. Now, do you envision now that you've got at least this model that uh, similar projects are going to emanate for, for other subject matters? Of course, you know, you know, this project also gave birth to a Sesotho um, International Association, which we just started, where um, we, we now are combining, uh, you know, the, the Sotos from Namibia, Zambia, uh, Botswana, uh, Zimbabwe, Lesotho, South Africa, to have our own 
journal, scholarly journal that's going to publish, you know, um, a, you know, accredited, uh, a, you know, um, a, articles. And it's 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 the start of, you know, um, as I said, the decolonization because it's it, it, we, we this is going to be now handed over from generation to generation. Sustaining this journal, uh, it, it, it's going to be something that. Other languages as well will also, uh, you know, take that and move with it. So we'll never have other, you know, challenges about, uh, you know, lack of uh, material because now scholars will be producing, uh, you know, journals that will be researching in our languages using our African languages, not English. And and fortunately, uh, you know, we have, um, uh, uh, you know, I've approached the uh, investor of, you know, the Northwest, which have showed interest in housing this journal, which is a breakthrough. So if we could have also something like that in other languages, I think we will never have uh, you know, challenges when it comes to um, uh, you know, our, our indigenous languages, because even this chapter cuts across health, cuts across you know, theater and, and, and law. It's not just about teaching the language, which is what uh, we, we want, because our, our, our learners are struggling, our students are struggling because of what the medium of, because of language, not because they do not know. If we have these concepts in our indigenous languages, then it's going to be easy for educational purposes. Prof, appreciate your time and congratulations on your achievement uh, and uh, getting this far. We thank you very much uh, for coming on this afternoon.